Hi, it's Julie from Art for You, and today we're going to be painting our interpretation of Monet Sunset. Off we go! Okay, so we're going to start by just dampening our canvas. So we don't want it soaking wet, but if we dampen our canvas first, it does help the paint flow more easily. Now, occasionally when we buy canvases, if they've been manufactured in a factory that has some oil, sometimes you might find, especially if we get the dollar store canvases, that the canvas is repelling the water. This is another good reason why I will dampen my canvas first, because if I find that it's beading and it's not, the water's not observe, ob absorbing, then um, you can spray it a little bit with um, either hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol or anything like that, and that will immediately take the oil off. So um, even those alcohol wipes you get in your first aid kit, they're really good at removing the oil from your canvas. So if you ever get a canvas covered in oil, those alcohol wipes or a little bit of hand sanitizer will, will make it nice and absorbent. So there's my first top tip for you. I'm going to hopefully share lots of little gems of wisdom with you. Okay, let's begin by adding some titanium white paint to the second quarter of the canvas. So if you imagine your canvas is divided into four, um, it's the second quarter down that we're adding white. Um, so you want to take it down to about the horizon line, so the middle of the canvas. The next thing we're going to add is cobalt blue hue to the top quarter of our canvas and blend it in a little bit into the white but we're going to stay in the top one quarter portion. Gonna take a little bit of that blue and put it in its pure form in the bottom right hand corner. And this time, instead of doing little axes, we're gonna go side to side. You'll find I use this large brush for most things. I, I do favor a three quarter inch flat and um, I'll use it a lot. It's my go-to brush. So I'm just going side to side with this uh, blue and I'm mainly staying in this bottom right-hand corner. 
Okay. So the next two colors we're going to use is yellow and red. So we get those out ready. Um, I'm going to be using cadmium red and cadmium yellow. So they're the two. So um, the three primaries, uh, red, yellow, and blue, um, you get lots of different types of these colors, but um, you tend to have a warm version and a cool version. So cadmium yellow is classed as our cool yellow and cadmium red is classed as our warm red. Now, um, a lot of the time when um, people are asking me for like a shopping list of what paints to buy, I'll say to get the warm and cool of the three primaries. And that's all you really need because we can make every color we need with those three primaries. Um, so just so you know, cadmium red is the warm red. It's a little bit more opaque. The cool version of this is alizarin red. This is high roll red, but it's basically similar to alizarin. And it's a bit more, tiny bit bluer and more transparent. So alizarin is the cool version and cadmium is the warm version. And then with regards to the yellows, Cadmium yellow is the cool version, but the warm version is yellow ochre. And you can see it's quite different. The warm yellow, yellow ochre, which is like a mustard color, that's classed as a warm yellow. Um, so for this painting, we're just going to be using cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and our cobalt blue. Um, but different. Just so you know, if you you know if you're buying colors and you see lots of different types of yellow, I would always go for the medium yellow um, rather than a light yellow if you're buying colors. Um, and then it's useful to get yellow ochre because this is the warm version, and this makes great olive greens when it's mixed with the blue. So um, this has a lot of uses. This uh, yellow ochre, but if you can only afford three colors then the cadmium yellow is the one I would go for, the medium one. Um, the, another name for the alizarin is, if you buy in like this Liquitex brand, is a nafol crimson. So sometimes it's known as crimson as well. Um, and I so say, you can see it's just a little bit cooler. It's a bit, tiny bit more on the bluer side. That's a, the cadmium red is a bit more on the orangey side. So I'm just gonna put a little bit out of the, this is my palette. I'm just gonna put a little bit out of the cadmium red and the cadmium yellow. This is where a pair of nutcrackers comes in very handy to get the lids off. I always have a pair of nutcrackers handy. <laughs> okay, so um, next day is really easy because I'm just working with the pure colors. So. For this time, I would like you to rinse your brushes. So get all of that blue off. And so wipe, rinse, wipe. So when you wipe on the paper towel, make sure there's no blue coming off onto the paper towel. If it is, just give it another rinse. And we are going to establish our horizon line. So fun fact, we all have one eye higher than the other. So um, whenever I'm doing a horizon line, I find it a little bit easier to tilt my canvas on its side because it's easier to draw top to bottom than from side to side. But, you know, play with that yourselves and see how you feel. So um, the rule of thumb is we don't put the horizon line dead center. We always go slightly slightly more sky or slightly more water. You don't want to cut it down the middle because it kind of breaks up the paint and, and then it just looks like a mirror. So um, 
it's always good to have a little bit more sky or a little bit more water. So I'm just going to drop the horizon slightly past the, the center. So when we're doing um, a straight line, I do use a large brush. I use a flat, large brush. Um, so I'll start with a damp brush and I use my fingers like a little pair of hair straighteners and I'll squeeze out the bristles and I'll make them nice and smooth by squeezing them out. So I use my fingers like a little pair of hair straighteners and we have oil in our hands. So this also helps smooth out the bristles. And then I am only going to put a tiny bit of paint on the edge of the brush. I do find this is a lot easier than trying to use a small brush to get a straight edge. The reason is, is if you imagine a small brush, we've only got a small amount of bristles on the end. A large brush, we've got all of this line that can correct any wobbles because I don't have a very straight, my hand wobbles a bit. So by doing a, a nice long edge, it allows for that wobble. So I'm just going to put a very small amount of paint and I mean a small amount of paint on the edge of my brush, very small amount. Um, that's the key for having get nice thin lines. And then I'm actually going to use my pinky finger to rest on the edge of my canvas to help uh, ground my finger so my hand doesn't wobble. And then I'm going to go slightly past the center line. Don't worry if your horizon's not perfectly straight because for this painting, it really doesn't matter. So we're gonna do mixing on the canvas. So we're gonna start by painting some red underneath our horizon line. So I would say just about an inch. And then without cleaning our brush, we are going to start adding a little bit of yellow into the mix. So I'm just going to dip my brush into my yellow and start going over. So I'm going to go slightly below that red. So I do a lot of mixing on the canvas. So I'm just going side to side. I'm going to keep dipping into my yellow and it should start getting more yellow as I go down. If it's still very orange, then you can wipe your brush off a little bit on the paper towel. But let's try and go all the way from left to right. You know, like Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi painting the fence. Like, let's <laughs> <laughs> go left to right. Okay. And you may go over everything apart from your blue. If you need to go over a little bit of the blue, that's fine. But let's leave the bottom corner if we can blue. So we're going to go over that white that we put down. So you can overlap the blue, that's fine. How hard do you press when you're blending? Not very hard. I always say, imagine you're stroking a baby kitten and you don't want to smush it. <laughs> okay. We don't want to kill the baby kitten. We're just petting it gently. <laughs> or a puppy if you're a dog person. I'm going to start in that bottom left hand corner and I'm just going to start brushing a bit of white into the mix. So I'm kind of going left and right. I want it to be streaky so it's the reflections of what's going on above. So I'm just bringing in a bit of white and I'm blending in again gentle pressure 
and I'm mainly concentrating in this bottom left hand corner. From side to side. Let's use cadmium yellow medium hue to go over majority of the white that we put down earlier. It's really important at this stage that we make sure that the canvas is dry because we don't want to get green. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to slowly add cadmium red and blend it into our yellow and bringing it down right down to the horizon line so it's fully saturated red right on the horizon line. We can make any color from these three primary colors. So we're gonna make a kind of brown. Um, the easiest way for me to explain brown is um, basically the three primaries mixed together make brown and you can mix them in any combination, but the way I normally recommend that you mix them, and I'm gonna use a slightly smaller brush for mixing, is to make orange first. So make a orange first. And then any two opposite colors on the color wheel. So the color wheel, which I put in your notes, any two opposites make brown, just different types of brown. So if you think orange and blue are opposite on the color wheel. So if you mix them together, you'll make brown.
we are going to go along our horizon line using the the pointy end of our flat brush. I'm going to go along the horizon line, so the upper part, the sky part, with that brown. Oops. And then again, we're going to just do little crisscrosses. And you don't need much at all. You don't need much of this. Little crisscrosses. And we're just going to crisscross until it kind of runs out. So you don't need very much at all. So I'm just going to sweep a little bit across. Just in a few places. Doesn't matter, it's a bit streaky. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this brown down here. And I'm, I'm really not being very gentle with this. I'm just kind of splodging it on. <laughs> there you go, there's a painting turn. Let's splodge, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a little splodge. So I've made like a maroon by mixing some red more red into that brown that we made. I'm just going to sweep it along and again just going back and forth with the the flat edge of the sorry not the flat edge the opposite of flat. <laughs> What's the opposite of flat pointy edge? Um, so I'm just going backwards and forwards focusing on the top part and this right side edge. You see how I'm doing that? I'm just, and you can even add a bit of water at this point. And can anybody remember who's been in my class before? What's it called when you add a thin layer of paint over a thick layer of paint that's dried? Beginning with glazing. Gl 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 glazing. Glazing. Yes, glazing. So I'm glazing. So I'm just adding a bit of water into my paint. And I am adding this kind of maroon, this brown with a bit of red in, going back and forth, so we're making it streaky and purposely making it streaky to make it look like water. I and just wonder above the horizon line, did you mix the brown into the red a bit or you just had it in its own space? I just had it in its own space. I just kind of put it on top. Um, but this is, so I've added, to show you my palette, I've added a, I've dipped my brush into my water and I've added a few drops of water into my brown and I've added some red into it. And this is called glazing. And it's where you're adding a thin layer of paint on top of your main layer of paint. And I'm just kind of going backwards and forwards just to get this kind of water effect. So In like fairly long strokes, but back and forth. If you find this easier to tilt the canvas on its side to do, some people find it easier going up and down. You know, Mr. Miyagi painting the fence. So yeah, glazing is a really fun technique, especially when you've not quite got the color you want or if you want to just add a, a another layer um it can it can change what you've previously painted and the nice thing about glazing because there's a lot of water if you don't like what you've done you can wipe it off with a bit of tissue or paper towel damp paper towel before it dries so it's a bit like having an eraser as well Can't say the English word for razor because it's rude in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> now we want to know what it is. Rubber. Oh, that's not rude though. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's a word there's a few words in Canada that are rude in England and they're not rude in Canada. So. Oh. Oh wow. Now you know what. Now you want to know what they are, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I laugh hysterically when an, anybody says fanny pack. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they fell on the fanny because it's quite rude in England. It? <laughs> and it's from Australia too. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. really? It's yeah. Quite a rude word. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it it doesn't mean the same thing. Uh -huh. Or fanny brace. Ah, yes. I think how many times we're 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 swearing. <laughs> When we talk to our kids and go on hikes. Yep. So I like this glazing. It's fun, isn't it? The glazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can build it up in different layers, and and it's quite nice if you've you know if you've painted something and it's you know, it needs to be a bit darker or, and, and we use this technique for, um, uh, you know, if you do rocks on yeah. the water, yeah. you can yeah. paint the rocks and then put a very thin glaze of water, you know, a color of water oh, on okay. the top. And that's how you make rocks look submerged underwater by just adding a very fine glaze. Wow. So I do on on my YouTube channel is a waterfall painting lesson. Yeah. And there's a, real, there's a really good glazing lesson on there if you ever want to have a little experiment with glazing. And I, I do I do bring that into a lot of classes the glazing. So it's um yeah it's fun isn't it the glazing you just get this this kind of layering feeling yeah. It fit for me, it feels like I've got a little bit more control. Yeah, and you can, so the one thing, you can either wipe it off if you find you don't like it, you can wipe it off with wet paper towel, but you can also get um, either you know, a ripped up piece of t-shirt or this cheesecloth that you can get. You, yeah. know, you, get the, you get the cheesecloth in the, the dollar store and you can just use it, like wet it, and then you can wipe it off and use it like an eraser. So you can oh, okay. even... Even if you find, you know, um, the glaze looks too thick, you can just thin it down a bit by wiping a little bit off and it wipes off yeah. really easily. Oh, wow. So, you know, have a little play with that as well. Get like a little this cloth or, you know, just have a go at wetting it and just gently wiping it off before it dries. And you can do some really nice soft blend blending that way as well. So oh. this is why I love acrylic because you can use them like watercolor yeah, or you yeah. can, you know, feel it, they're quite versatile. Okay, we're gonna take our brown. I'm gonna show you, refresh our memory of how to make it. Um, so let's start from scratch. We're gonna take orange, which is yellow and red. And, you know, you want to make kind of a dark orange, so not too light. And then we're going to add blue to it. And that will make our brown. So a kind of orangey red plus, plus blue. And you want to keep adding blue until it looks a sort of chocolate brown. And then I would say place your finger. So it's a finger space below the horizon line. So that's about how much lower you want to go. And I'm going to kind of walk my brush along. Oh, I see. It's about a finger space below. I'm going to walk my brush along. I'm just going to dab. So I'm going to dab to about halfway and then I'm going to come back again. And then about a third of the way across, that's where my little island's going to be. And what I'm going to do is put my brush on its side and just kind of go up and down. Okay. Stock market kind of 
Tap, 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 up and down. Uh, which I'm going to put in now again with that kind of glazing technique. I'm just going to go very oh, softly okay. back and forth. I went okay. a bit heavy previously, so I'm just going to okay. just going to go back and forth with a bit of a glaze. I'm just going to add a bit extra blue into my brown for this. And I'm going to start by painting a thin-ish line.
And then I am going to add a bit of white to my brown just for the uh, the buildings that are closer kind of in front. I'm just going to just dab up and down a little bit with my lighter brown. So white with a bit of brown. 